the inclination of the earth, finding ourselves inclined like an afternoon in winter, we are disturbed by the obliquity, not able to catch the sun as a pool does water falling. There is a flood of sun across the land. All this unvesseled light, our untouched dissatisfactions, flood from our hands, held cup to catch them. Home address. We always lived in a big house, bigger than we needed. And none of us could seem to understand the way the pieces went together or why the rooms were planned the way they were. We tried to fill the house as best we could, idly, fingering the contours of the wood. We tried which way to fit them to, have to the hand, but the fingers always failed to understand. The garden grew more tangled year by year. We remodeled. Nothing helped us. We despaired of making the house look right, of ever living there in comfort. There were drafts across the floor, and in the winter, coming alone from school, we waited outside till there was at least a light and someone else inside. We hated the night. We hated the big, disordered, incongruous house. It was beyond our power. But we stayed on there. We lived in order different from the walls. Leaving an empty room to disrepair, we laughed a little, seeing the crooked halls. My father photographed with friends. This is my father, photographed with friends when he was young. Unsettled on the steps of a wooden porch and the one who lived there, elegant beside him. They and the others hopefully casual in the face of the deciding camera, the judgments of which are unfeeling, but can be swayed. And I, as in some later picture of myself, look for a person identified beyond doubt, and knowing that he is none of the ones that he is not, yet still unsure under the features composed and trusting who is there as if the decision were long and legal when handed down, hard to be read and truly rendered in such a case, and hard in the face to find our usual pitiful ends. God sweeten the bitter judgments of our lives. We wish so much. The changes. How soon across these hills, air hazes green to blue, then hardens it to purple. Ah, the changes. Cloud shadows run the lifted contours of the ground, and the earth is moved like water form and color changing with the light. And there is weather here and seasons, so that hour by hour, month to month, it seems it could be almost only by our own not moving that this air moved, light moved, restless place could be called as we do call it, the same place. Oh, 
call it so, but rather because a change which stills all other changes in ourselves, where an inner weather rages and becomes, grows light and dark with as complete effect as though it were everything the weather, the shifts of light. At Tikal. Mountains they knew, and jungle, the sun, the stars. These seemed to be there. But even after they slashed the jungle and burned it and planted the comforting corn, they were discontent. They wanted the shape of things. They imagined a world and it was as if it were there. A world with stars in their places and rain that came when they called. It closed them in. Stone by stone as they built this city, these temples, they built this world. They believed. This was the world, and they, of course, were the people. Now trees make up assemblies and crowd in the wide plazas. Trees climb the stupendous steps and rubble them. In the jungle, the temples are little mountains again. It is always hard like this, not having a world to imagine one, to go to the far edge apart and imagine, to wall whether in or out, to build a kind of cage for the sake of feeling the bars around us to give shape to a world. And oh, it is always a world and not the world. The annihilation of matter. The light, at least, was not to be dismissed. A hunked-up moon rode a starred sky. Those objects. What were those objects? Some trivial trees, something. Never mind. It was the light that mattered as earlier... That afternoon, the wash of sun crossing the same place. But it was not the same in a different light. Would it be otherwise in a real world? Who could answer? Here it was always the light that mattered, and only the light. Once it had seemed the objects mattered, the light was to see them by. Examined. They yielded nothing, nothing real. They were foreseeing the light in various ways. And they gathered it, released it, held it in. In them, the light revealed itself, took shape. Objects are nothing. There's only the light. The light. Greek stones look as though they'd flowed into molds of figures, fluting, leaf forms, scrolls, a sensed and sensible world turned stony hard and durable, medusa to hold and be true as figure carving holds an impress pressed on the carver's eye by a visible form whose grace and harmony his hand lays hold and holds. This way of handling stone is to say of the world it is workable and yielding and full to the hand and there quarrying quarried a rich world. Looking at stones the Incas laid 
abstract austerities, unimitative stones, so self-absorbed in their unmortared close accommodation, stone to different stone, exactly interlocked, deep-joined, we see them say of the world, there is nothing to say. Who had to spend such easing care on stone found grace inherent more as idea than in the world, loved simple soundness in a just joint, and the pieces together once, though elsewhere apart. The Nature of Musical Form It is hard to believe of the world that there should be music in it, these certainties against the all-uncertain, this ordered fairness beneath the tonelessness, the confusion of random noise. It is tempting to say of the incomprehensible, the formlessness, there is only order as we so order, and ordering make it so, or there is a natural order which music apprehends, which apprehension justifies the world, or even this, these forms are false, not true, and music irrelevant at least, the world is stated somewhere else, not there. But no. How is it? There is a fairness of person, too, which is not a truth of persons, or even we learn a truth of that person particularly. It is only fairness, stating only itself, as though we could say of music only, it is. The world in time and space if there is a shape to the world in terms of time and space, our own or by concessions to shapes of others received, if there is such a shape, in part there is, note that the words we use referring to time as temporary, for one, or temporal, admit our diffidence toward any shape we give the world by time. The shapes of space share less of this distrust. We acknowledge chaotic recalcitrance in space, its endlessness both ways, the great and small, and yet respect the finite shape of bounded places as much as to say they are true. Some absolute of shape is stated there which satisfies the need that makes this shape. How strange that after all it is rarely space but time we cling to, unwilling to let it go. The outcry. What I want to do is shout. Happiness? No. Outrage? No. What I want to do is shout, because we were all wrong, because the point was not the point, because the world, or what we took for the world, is breaking, breaking. We were wrong, and are not right. Break, break, we are here. What I want to do is shout, break. 